Look how black is this water. It is black. This is all from inside of the sand. After pulling out all the rocks, the pebbles. This is not from the filter. This is all just inside of that sand. What do we got in store today? Well, we're going to be working on our 10 gallon tank here on a subject pretty much based off of what I already spoken about. So what we got here, we got our 10 gallon tank and I had a discussion about smelly tanks. Um, something that I seen a lot of people commented on on my Instagram and this tank here specifically has been dealing with that smelly tank syndrome that a lot of us get which is very normal depending on the scent that you're getting. Um, some people get it because of the type of substrate they have. They may have a, a dirt substrate, so you get that muddy stench that doesn't please the nose. Or you can have that very heavy planet tank that might have a dead fish or a dead snail somewhere in there, and you're smelling that. Um, you can have that filter smell where your filter just overloaded um, because of how much um, is being let go inside of the tank when it comes to poop and ammonia and everything else that happens within an aquarium. Uh, there was a subject that I was talking about that in the other video that I didn't speak on. I talked about gravel vacuuming your tank which is very important to get a lot of decaying plants and things like that off the bottom. But what I didn't talk about is how your substrate depending if it's gravel, sandstone, so forth can actually hold underneath it uh poop uh dead snails their uh, shells dead plant matter uh, air bubbles that are filled with toxic waste and everything else um we can't as hobbyists get every little piece of grain of poop or whatever the fish has left behind fish food that gets within under this soil especially depending like this tank here it's a very thin sand that gets very like hard. Basically, it holds down plants really good, but it's mixed in with a thin gravel, um, a little smaller than this green right here, um, with some larger rocks. This plant used to, this tank used to be very heavily planted before he got put it in. Now, unfortunately, this is uh, about eight inch plecos. I probably can measure him since he's right there. So he's about eight inch. Let's see, from right there. He's about nine inches and five eighths. Well, he grew a whole inch and some, and some chain. Now, th the sad part about this is, and I know a lot of people will tell me that he shouldn't be in a 10 gallon tank, that he should have about 55 to 70 gallons of of water which that's what he was in he was in a 55 gallon tank all by himself he was the king of the tank uh, the tank was at another person's house um they couldn't care for him no more and i brought him along with the tank and originally i was supposed to sell that tank to get a bigger tank and just put him in that tank but uh things happen you know um i gotta move out of the house that i'm staying in now uh so i found it to be okay I put him in this tank and let him be I use it as a holding tank a lot of the tanks in my room except the one over here are holding tanks and debatable um, for as the fish grow they go into bigger tanks like my all my other tanks but now that I'm moving it's kind of it wouldn't make sense for me to set up an entire 55 gallon buy fish put him in there let that uh, cycle for however long it takes to cycle and then have to drain all that water and remove all that to the new home. So he's just been staying in this tank. Now, can a fish of this size be happy in this? Um, I can't answer that because I'm not the fish, but as a human being, is a human happy inside of a prison? No, um, it's small, it's confined, um, but can you be healthy and taken care of in something this small that big yes he gets plenty of food um plenty of light he gets enough dark time he gets a variety of different type of uh algae wafers uh blood worms uh cucumber zucchini you name it it goes in there he eats it along with all the other plants that were in this tank now 
with him being in here, he has transformed this tank. He killed off, I would say this tank probably had about 60% plants. Uh, it probably has about, <laughs> with these three right here only being the only live plants and not looking that well, pretty much he killed off everything and left like 3%, if that's an actual number and if I'm percentaging that right, which I know I'm not. But how can this be fixed? How can this uh, tank be fixed? How can I fix the smell issue? Well, that's what we're going to work on today. Um, I discussed multiple ways on how to get rid of that and how to, to make your tank 10 times better when it comes to filtration. Filtration plays a heavy role in the smell of your tank, cleaning it. So we're going to pull him out, put him in something else to let him hold, pull her out, put her in something else to behold. Um, I'm going to drain about this much of the water. Um, we're going to pull out all of the rocks. I'm going to get the snails out, put them in the other tank. Um, pull the plants out, clean them off. Probably put them in a different tank as well. And then stir the sand up and try to gravel vacuum as much of the junk that I can get out of there with filling and draining, filling and draining, filling and draining. Pulling the filter off cleaning the filter thoroughly um now you can be thinking okay that's going to ruin the cycle for this tank yes it, it, it is what that said is the filtration that's already inside of this filter will be saved i'm holding it and i'm going to be using a sponge that's going to go inside of that filter with bio balls that are already active meaning having beneficial bacteria will go in this tank. New beneficial bacteria balls or the micro balls that I use will go in another tank and it won't cause harm to the other tank because the other tank have a very good pH level and a very, it just leveled very perfectly. A lot of beneficial bacteria in that tank. Um, give it about 24 hours or less. Um, give it a day pretty much and then test it and then if it looks to be fine, the fish go back in. The problem that I have with this, um, so he will be going into four, 15 quarts, um, which 15 quarts is what, like five gallons or something like that? I, I don't know. Um, for the meantime, which is decent because he actually, I actually had him in that for about three weeks before this tank recycled again. This tank been through multiple recycles, so uh, it cycles pretty quickly. Let's get to work. So how are we gonna get our beta out of here? Probably the question is being asked. So we're gonna siphon some water out of this into what he's getting ready to go in. And a lot of people use their hand to grab bigger fish because the net can possibly uh, hurt them, which is a factor. They're, they got barbs and little hairs on their fins that and their uh, whiskers that get caught up on the net and can possibly injure them. So they use their hand. The problem with using your hand is fish have a slime coat. Um, your dry hands can remove that slime coat and the slime coat to them is very beneficial um, keeping them from getting uh, parasites uh, diseases and other things like that um, also your hand can you can have lotion and chemicals and whatever on your hand that can get on their skin and cause irritations or other issues for them killing them in the long run a lot of people don't realize that and it actually happens. So uh, we're going to try to take this, which he doesn't fit in and it has holes. So scoop him up in, like I did to put him in here and then put him inside of the tank without stressing him out a whole lot. And you're probably thinking, Andre, just stick your hand in here. Stop being a punk, pick them up, put them in the tank. We're not going to do that. 
we're not going to waste our time doing that. Definitely don't want to hurt them. I don't know my strength. I don't know how hard I will have to squeeze to pick him up out of the tank and end up hurting him being so strong. Okay. This right here is what he's going to go in. Set this back up. And then our beta, she will be going in this for the meantime. Now I made a video about escaping this and I said that I will only use something this long just to hold a bait or a fish or a snail or something like that for uh, starting a new tank or something like that. They would I would not put anything in this and keep anything in this for no more than a week if that was necessary. All right, let's try to get our beta friend first. Always make sure your net is clean and you rinse it. Yep. <laughs> Betas do jump and she is being feisty. She did not want to go in there. She was like, hell no, hell no. Don't fight it. Right. Okay, go on. We're gonna have to try something different. She definitely doesn't want to go in there. We got him right there. Look how big he is. Imagine something living in this. Whew. Huge. All right, fishes are out. This is what I had in there for the meantime. Trash that. Look at this. Dirty, dirty tank. So what we're going to do is, if I find it, this sponge here, this costs like dollars and change or something like that, or cut smart Petco. Two sponges in it. You can cut it, cut it long ways or you can cut it in half. And I'll give you four pieces. This you'll take and put inside of your filter. And on top of that, either on the bottom or the top, doesn't really matter, but I like to put it on the top because you, you want to pull this out every couple of months to just give it a good squeeze to get whatever is in it out. Beneficial bacteria will still be there. You can get a little baggie like this. You fill that with lava rock or... Uh, the little micro media balls that I show you guys all the time and then put this in the bottom with this on top 
and this netting also will hold beneficial bacteria. We're going to take our filter off. I believe the filter is part of the smell, the bad smell of the tank. So anything that I feel like causing the bad smell is going to get clean. Now we're going to pull out our plants. Got a snail on here. Pull it out very carefully. And just wave him off. Don't want to rip the roots all up to the point where I can't get it out. If you want your plants to grow, you want to break off any dead plants on it. Boom. Now we're going to try to look for the little snails. We'll be right back. Now we're up on it. Look at it. Now we're just gonna get out all these small, smaller rocks. This is now what we're looking at. Got a lot of the pebbles out of the tank, the small pebbles, the big rocks. kind of getting rescaped you know uh, similar to a rescape tank but if you see all these dark spots here that's like poop and dead skin and dead plant matters I found a few uh, empty uh, snail shells actually I actually um yeah I killed one uh, I crushed one when I was trying to get out the uh, the small pebbles using this and I pretty much raked it and split them in half. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. Oh. Look how black is this water. It's black. This is all from inside of the sand. After pulling out all the rocks, the pebbles. This is not from the filter. This is all just inside of that sand. Clear it out as much as I can. It is rescaped. We removed almost every single pebble that I was able to get from the bottom. It's most of everything that was in there. Way too much gravel that caused the smell of this tank. Let's show you the filtration. So we took our beneficial sponge that had been sitting in this tank since it recycled 
We took a little baggie and put some of our filter media balls on here. And now this tank will shortly be ready for the fish to go right back in. Look at it. We added that huge rock that was meant for this tank that I didn't put in. And we just put it in here. I might remove the seashell, I'm not digging it. But there goes the plants. That's how you get rid of a smelly tank. Just like that. Don't smell anything anymore. Uh, so the smell can be multiple different things. You just have to figure it out what it is. For this tank, it was just too much gravel and too much gunk underneath the sand and underneath the gravel. I took care of that now. I won't have to deal with that. I like how that looks right there. Little skinny fish or whatever can just like crawl up under there. Backside. It's cloudy because of the sand's all stored up. I'm going to let everything settle and add the fish probably in tomorrow. So thanks for viewing. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Let me know what you think. Tell me about your situation of you having a smelly tank or just about anything. I might be able to help you fix your issue and do a video on it. This tank had a smell. We did a video about how to get rid of smells. And then I showed you today uh, how to get rid of the smell by just pretty much redoing the tank. Um, necessarily, you don't have to go that far. Um, you can start with the normal steps, which water change, wiping down all four of the glasses, uh, removing the filter cartridge, cleaning your filter. Um, things like that, getting rid of dead plants, so on and so forth. If that smell is still there, even after that, and you've been doing that week in and week out, you might have to do a deeper cleaning and just go into your substrate and do a complete clean of it. Look how crystal clear is the substrate. Go back and view some of my other videos. You'll see like this weird uh, grayish shade over the substrate. The next video I drop will be on my 29 gallon tall tank. We added a, uh, a plant to it. I was going to say a few plants because there was. I put uh, one of them inside of the tank and got one. But I added a plant from our other tank over here into that one. And it looks really good. It's very clear. I'm going to give you a glimpse. I'll give you a glimpse. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. I need one more plant for that backside over there. And this tank would be good. I'm thinking about going in here and doing similar clearing out as a lot of these rocks down at the bottom and getting rid of a lot of this and just add more sand in here yeah things are coming big things are coming mm -hmm.